Hello, guys. Uh, welcome back to Mason African Motives. Uh, still on our Meccano Techniques uh, revisions for Meccano Techniques N5. Uh, we shall be considering this question, which is uh, the application of our conveyor belt uh, in uh, our calculations. How are we supposed to uh, play around with the formulas that we are uh, given for conveyor belt in this case? Uh, we've got similar concept in most of the uh, part of our formulas, just like a normal uh, build that we are talking about, talking about uh, the V build, just at, uh, I mean the the flat build. The direct application of our flat build is what we are talking about in this case only. That we can have sometimes a combination of a horizontal and inclined plane, uh, depending with the type of question that you are given. So this is a pre twenty twenty one question that we are given. A conveyor belt uh, delivers uh, one hundred ten ton of crushed uh, stones per hour in this case. So there we are given the mass per hour in this case, which is 110 uh, ton in this case, which uh, depending with the part that you're gonna use, your mass, but we are given the mass, uh, which is uh, in given in what? Per hour. So let us just write, we shall see where we are going to use the mass, then we convert when there's a need for us to do uh, the conversion. So our mass there is 110, uh, ton per hour of the uh, okay to a storage bin so this is per hour all right then the distance between the main pulley centers is uh, 90 meters so we've got the distance that is between at uh, the main pulley you can just write this as l uh in this case which is 190 uh, meters and also we are given the speed of uh, the 750 millimeter width uh, a draft belt is 85 meters per minute so we're given the speed at the width of so if we've got the width in this case uh of what uh 750 millimeters so we've got the width of uh 750 millimeters just convert to meters there unless there's a part that need per minute or per millimeter so uh, let us just write it 750 millimeters, which is 0 0.75 meters. We shall see if there's a need for us to use the millimeter, uh, depending on the question that you're given. Then you're given that the speed there is the one that you're given as 85 uh, meters per minute. So that's our velocity in this case. We can just have this velocity 85 uh, meters per, per minute. So just convert this to meters per second. Remember a minute is got 60. Uh, seconds, so we're going to divide by 60 per minute, means one minute. So it's going to be 85 meters over one minute to second, it's uh, 60 seconds. So in order to have per second, we're going to divide this 85, um, divide by 60, which is going to be 1, 4, uh, 6, 6 like that, which is going to be 1,417 in the meters per second, All right? That's the speed. And uh, also we are given here the coefficient of friction between the pulley and the belt is 0, 0.25. So we've got the coefficient of friction of 0, 0.25 in this case uh, between the pulley and the belt. So we've got the coefficient of friction of 0, uh, 0.25 in this case. And uh, we are given that the discharge is uh, 12 meters higher than the, the loading point. So that is the distance, which is the height in this case taken in between. Uh, remember on our inclined, we shall have something of this nature uh, to a certain point, uh, right? Just something like this, uh, taken to a certain height to the ground. So we are given between uh, the height between the discharge and the loading point, which is in between the two points. That's our height of what? 12 meters in this case, all right? So we've got the height, uh, which is 12 meters. And also from our information, we are given that uh, the, the snap pulley provides a contact angle between the belt and the main pulley off. So we've got the contact angle of uh, 220 and uh, the power to overcome friction is zero, is 35% of the power required to lift the load against Gravity. All right, there is a statement that we need to consider. Let us just finish this part first. Uh, the angle of contact, remember, is theta. 
220 degrees. And I said theta always in radians, we're gonna convert this to radians, which is 220 over 57,3. That is the angle of contact in radians, all right? Then uh, we are given the statement that uh, that combines the power to overcome uh, the friction and the power required to lift the load against gravity. So they are saying the power to overcome friction is 35% of the power required to lift the load against gravity. So uh, that is uh, the uh, power due to uh, mean to overcome the friction, which is uh, is equal to 35% of the power uh, to overcome, which is uh, the one for gravity against gravity that overcome friction. So they are saying it's 35% of this. And remember 35% if we divide by 100 is going to give us 0 0.35. So it's a ratio that we have between these two powers, the one uh, against gravity and the one to overcome uh, friction. There is, we are given the ratio between these two or a relationship between these two. If we have one, we can calculate the other one. All right, then the drive, is 75% efficient. They were given the efficient. Remember the efficient from the transmitted power over the motor power. So that's where we have this efficiency of 75%. Remember the efficiency, uh, we simply talk about what the, the load power over the motor power, which is the transmitted power at the output and the load power in this case, which is, uh, we shall talk about that uh, because we are given, might need to use this value. All right, 2.1, it was calculate each of the following, the power against gravity. So you need the power against gravity in this case, which is a PG in this case, all right, against uh, gravity. So uh, we know that this power against gravity is simply, uh, we are talking about the potential energy in this case, all right? We are talk simply talking about the potential energy, that's our power. So PG is simply MGH, mass, times the gravitational acceleration times the height. So this mass here is supposed to be, uh, remember we need the power. So you are supposed to have kilojoule per second so that it gives us a kilowatt or maybe it's supposed to be a joule per second so that it gives us a, a power in watts in this case, all right. So in order for us to obtain this joule per second or the kilojoule per second, it means we must have our mass in kilograms per second. So we are going to have this mass here in kilograms per second. So we are supposed to convert our mass that we are given. Uh, that was uh, 110 ton. So we are going to convert the ton to kilograms. Remember a ton is equivalent to 1000 uh, kilograms. So you're going to multiply by a thousand, which is 110,000 uh, kilograms over an hour. We are supposed to have this in seconds, like I said. So one hour is equivalent to 3,600 uh, seconds. So you're gonna use 3,600 times uh, the gravitational acceleration of 9,81 times the height uh, where we are given 12 in this case. All right, so that is going to give us, uh, that is the potential energy, which is the uh, power due to the gravity in this case, all right? So this is going to give us three, uh, 3,597, uh, which is actually joules per second, which represent a watt in this case, all right? So that's in watts. And you can convert to kilowatts if you want, you divide by 1,000, it's going to be 3,597 uh, kilowatts. All right, so that's our PG in this case, okay? So that was a straightforward question, three marks for that. The power against what? Gravity. Then the power required to overcome friction. In actual sense, uh, the power required to overcome friction, we can take it from the ratio that we're given between uh, the graphic, uh, the one against gravity because we're given that it's, it's 35% of this, which is 0 0.5. That is where we can obtain what? Uh, the power to overcome the, what? the friction. But in actual sense, we're supposed to have this power to overcome the friction from this formula, the power to overcome the friction is supposed to be from the frictional force times the velocity in this case. As you can see, we do not have uh, the frictional force. We have got the velocity here, the equation of friction, and we do not have what? The frictional force. So we are limited. So you can just use the ratio that we are given because we are given the ratio that connects between these two, uh, the power to overcome friction 
Uh, so that would be 2.2. So the power over come friction, remember we are told that it's a 0 0.35 times uh, the power against gravity in this case. And we calculated the power against gravity. So we're just going to substitute our values, multiply to the power against gravity, which is 3,5 uh, in kilowatts. If you use this value in kilowatts, it means you are going to obtain the answer for this one in kilowatts also. All right. So that is the power. In this case, to overcome the friction, is going to be given as uh, we're going to obtain 1,2589 and so on, which is 59 uh, kilowatts. So like I said, we used the value in kilowatts. So the answer is going to be in kilowatts. So as you can see, it's the use of formulas, guys. You just have to know your formulas, uh, just like our N4, it's just direct forward. And the power of the motor in this case. All right, um, where are we going to obtain the power of the motor? Remember, we are given the efficiency there and uh, the power of the motor is the input power, right? Uh, we've got P out, which is the transmitted power or PL, which is uh, the transmitted power. We have got uh, the transmitted uh, power in this case, all right? Which represents our P out. So due to the efficiency that you are given here, uh, remember we've got efficiency, we can use that. And how are we going to have the effective, power, which is uh, the output power because P motor is the input power and there we do not have the output power. All right, let's consider this uh, with the formula so that we can uh, present this properly. All right, so from this part, what I'm simply saying, uh, that's 2.3, am, am I numbering properly? Yeah, 2.3. So from this, we are supposed to obtain from our efficiency, we are saying it's supposed to be the output power over the input power times 100% whereby the output power is the transmitted power in this case, which is uh, actually uh, the load power, all right? We, if you're talking about the load power, you're talking about the combination of our power uh, due to gravity in this case, which is the power against gravity and the power to overcome friction. So it's going to be the sum of these two, all right? So there we can calculate this by adding the two, uh, which is the, power against gravity of uh, 3,597 kilowatts plus the power to overcome the friction, which is 1,259 kilowatts. So these values are in kilowatts. So you're going to obtain the output power also in kilowatts in this case, which is going to be 4,856 kilowatts. All right, so that is what you're going to have as a sum of these two. But the question is, we are supposed not to calculate this output power, but the input power, which is the power to uh, power of the motor in this case. Remember the question here is calculate the power of the motor in this case, and that is our PN. So we are supposed to be focusing not on this one. We are supposed to calculate the power of the motor. So the power of the motor now can be calculated because we've got the output power. We're just going to substitute into our formula the efficiency, at 100%, we are just going to divide by that 100%. So we're just going to take this as a decimal, which is 0 0.75. So we are going to have uh, 0 0.75 is equal to the output power in kilowatts, which is 4.856 over the input power, which is the power of the motor in this case, the one that you're supposed to calculate. And this must be in kilowatts, right? We can even just write in short, even PM. Uh, even just online and write P motor P like it's fine, but you can just write in short, All right? So remember this value is in kilo watts, this one. So our answer is going to be also in kilowatts. So cross multiply that's 0 0.75 times the power of the motor, which is the input power must be equal to 4.85 divided by this 0 0.75. We obtain the power that is going to affect our motor in this case, All right? So if we divide by 0 0.75 both sides, we are going to obtain 6,47. So that is 474, which is 475 in kilowatts. It was 47466, all right. So here we just divided by 0 0.75 per side by 0 0.75 so that we remain with the power that is affecting the motor, which is our input power. So like I said, uh, they can ask this question as the input power and you are supposed to know that it's one and the same thing, the input power 
or the power that is uh, affecting our motor in this case. It's just one and the same thing. All right, then uh, let us check the other part of the question there. They wanted us to calculate the belt uh, tensions, which is T1 and T2. We had a similar question like this, working with a normal belt drive, not uh, dealing with a conveyor belt drive in this case. Uh, the question or the idea there is the same uh, this time. Let us just have our formulas in this case, which include T1 and T2 in this case, so that we can be able to calculate these values. I don't think we're gonna be able to, uh, we're going to need this PG in this case. Uh, we are not gonna need this PG in this case. We used uh, this part uh, where it was needed. So I'm just gonna remove this part. We're not gonna use this PG so that we can properly see what I'm trying to say. And here, we're not gonna need this one again. All right. We talked about this, that um, we just need formulas that consist of T1 and T2. Six marks there is a solving of equations there. Uh, let us say, check our formula. So under the conveyor belt, uh, it follows that T1 over T2, uh, T1 over T2 is equal to A to the exponent of a micro theta like this, all right? Which is the ratio between T1 and T2 on our tensions. And also it follows that T1 is equal to the width, uh, the belt width times uh, N, which is the, the number of belt plies uh, times the maximum allowable tension. In this case, if you are given uh, the maximum allowable tension. And also it follows that uh, from the effective tension, uh, from the effective tension, it follows that it is equal to T1 minus T2. Guys, we do not know to which formula to use. We just have to write our formulas. And also it follows that from the output power, which is our load power. Remember, we calculated the load power, which is the output power. It's the effective tension, which is T1 minus T2 times the velocity. Are we having the velocity? Yes, we've got the velocity. So these are the formulas that we are supposed to think about or think of in this case in order for us to have what? T1 and T2. All right, let's start by uh, this one is out because we do not, we are not given the width or even the number of guys or this maximum allowable potential. So this one for now is out. Okay, we are left with this one. Uh, we can formulate a ratio between these two, right? And also the power, we have the load power, uh, the velocity we have. So we, we can also form equations. So here we're gonna form equations uh, between these two. Here we can form equations between this one and this one, because this one TE is the same as this part that we have here. So it means it's already used this one. We have already exhausted this in this formula. So we're not gonna consider this, all right? So meaning to say, I'm going to consider these two formulas, but how am I going to connect the dots? Okay, let's start with the first one. T1 over T2 is equal to, e to the exponent of uh, micro theta. So let us just substitute here. So it means we're going to have T1 uh, over T2 is equal to e uh, to the exponent. You can just cross multiply so that we can have this in terms of T2. All right, let us just have a lower load. Just cross multiply here. So it's going to be T2 e to the exponent of uh, the coefficient of friction uh, whereby we have this as 0 0.25 here. So that's 0 0.25 times our angle of contact in radians. Our angle of contact, remember, in radians is uh, 270 over 57,3. So this is going to give us T1 uh, in terms of T2 because we have got T2 there. So just simplify this part on your calculator. If you simplify, uh, that part on the calculator, you are going to obtain uh, 2,61133, which is 1, 1 times T2, because we've got T2 as the unknown value, which cannot be simplified. So that's it. That's an equation that we're going to have. We have written T1 in terms of T2. Let's just leave it like that. Then let's consider the power, the load power and the velocity, because we've got the velocity here from uh, the 85 meters per minute, we converted to meters per second. So you can use the load power. Remember, we calculated the output power, which is our load power here, which was 4,8, uh, 5, 6. Uh, in this case, that is our load power in this case. Okay, so you can just save this as the subject. 
uh, that is 4,8 uh, 5, 6 times 10 to the exponent of 3 is equal to the t1 minus t2 times the velocity in this case, all right, whereby we have our velocity, we calculated, the, uh, we changed this to meters per second, our velocity 1, 417. So we're going to have our velocity in meters per second, 1,417 1, uh, 1, meters per second. All right. So as we can see, guys, we've got two equations that we have formulated from this information. And we can write this or we can have this equation uh, in terms of T1 and T2. Yes, so we've got two unknowns. So let us just divide so that we remain with T1 over T2. So the moment we just divide this by 1,417, uh, both sides, we are going to remain with T1 minus T2. So that's T1 minus T2 in this case is going to give us this part, All right? So just divide uh, that part, you are going to obtain uh, 3,426,958. All right, that's a ratio between, I mean, that's the difference between T1 and T2, which is a, our effective tension. We're talking about effective tension in this case, T1 minus T2. So as you can see, guys, we're back to the simultaneous equations, uh, whereby this is our equation two. Uh, and from the equation two that we have, we can determine or you can find T2 because we have got, from equation one, T1 is the subject. So you can substitute T1 in place of what? T1 in equation two. So let us just do that. We are now to solve this simultaneous equation so that we find T1 and T2. We're not gonna need this, but Yes, guys, I'm, I'm erasing this. I just hope we are not going to use these values, but I just hope you know the answers now. All right. So like I said, we now have the simultaneous equation here, uh, the first equation and the second equation. So you can just substitute. Uh, in this case, we're just going to substitute uh, T1 in uh, from equation 1 into uh, equation 2, into equation uh, 2. That is uh, in place of T1 of equation two, you're gonna substitute our T1, which is this value of T1. So it means we are going to have this T1 minus T2 now written as uh, 2 comma 6, uh, 1, 1, T2, representing T1. In place of T1, we are substituting that value. All right, minus T2 in this case. So there's a minus T2, this one. This must give us uh, 3,426,95. So that's we can calculate the value of T2 because this is the same as one. So we can subtract uh, the two values. That will be 1,611 from our calculator. If we subtract this, that will be 1,611. T2 is equal to 3,426,95. So to find T2 divide by 1,611, uh, 1,611 both sides. So this will give us uh, the value of T2 from our calculator. Uh, this value is going to be, uh, that's five. We're supposed to have another digit there from my simple, there was a, an eight there. We're supposed to have a value that's an eight there. So there is eight there because I'm surprised value that I'm obtaining and the one that I obtained before is not the same. So that's an eight there. So it'll be uh, in this case, two, uh, 2,127,224 in uh, Newton, this case, this is tension. So we have obtained T2. Uh, we can solve for T1. Uh, either you substitute in equation two or you can substitute in equation one. Equation one is best because already T1 is the subject. So T1 is equal to 2,611 T2. So you can just substitute there to find our T1 in this case. So to find T1, we are going to use the ratio uh, that we are given that T1 is equal to 2,611 times T2, and we calculated uh, T2 in this case, we're just gonna substitute uh, 2,611 times T2, which is 2,127,224. Uh, All right, so that is going to give us the tension on the height side in this case. All right, so this is going to give us uh, something like, all right, uh, from my multiplication here, I'm getting 5,554,182 in uh, Newton in this case. All right, so that's it. We calculated our tensions, T1 and T2. So as you can see, it's just a direct application of our normal belt uh, drive in this case, all right? 
our normal flat belt drive in this case. Uh, just normal, just a direct application as we can see. So it is very, very important for you to know and how to apply your information as given. All right, as you are given the what the information, how are you going to be able to uh, uh, use it? All right, so that was it. Then the last part of our question was to find the number of flies. All right, so if we have this, if you're talking about a flat belt, they will talk, they will ask you, uh, or there's a need where you're going to need to use the number of flies, or like this part where you're asked to calculate the number of flies in this case in the belt, if the allowable tension, so are given the maximum allowable tension of two kilonewton per meter, take note per meter width per ply. So we are given per meter width per what? Per ply. So to take note about that. And here it's an advantage because we've got the width, our width was taken at 0 0.75. So let us just take this into consideration also. All right, let me just use this space so that, uh, okay, I can just even use it here. Uh, remember, we calculated our T1 and our T2 here. Remember, I also listed on the formula before for T1, and I erased that, and I said we cannot use that formula because we do not have uh, the maximum allowable tension for T1, where I said T1 is equal to the width times the number of flies times the maximum allowable tension, if you still remember about that formula that I talked about. All right, so there we are given the maximum allowable tension in this case of two, uh, kilonewton per meter uh, with belt per ply in this case. All right. We are asked to calculate the number of flies. So we're just going to substitute because T1, we calculated T1, so which is a 5,554. 5,554,182 is equal to the belt width. Uh, if you are not given the width, you take it per meter width, but in this case, we're not going to take per meter width because we are given the width. Yes, we are using the per meter width, but for how many meters of the, the width, the width being 0 0.75 meters. So we are going to multiply by the number of meters, 0 uh, 0.75 times N, which is the number of plies in this case, times the maximum allowable tension, which is taken per meter with which is two kilonewton in this case. So that's two times 10 to the exponent of three. So to find N, we can simply divide uh, by this part uh, on the other side of our equation. So that is going to give us the value of N if we divide. So these are the number of flies, which is going to give us uh, something like 3,7027 like that. So you're gonna approximate our number of flies to the nearest one number. So that will be a four. If we approximate to the nearest one number, so we're talking about uh, four flies in this case, okay? Uh, guys, this is how our questions are given as, and like there are questions that you have to consider the number of flies. And there's a question like this one where you have to calculate the number of flies. So revise as much questions as you can uh, from your question papers and also your textbook so that uh, it must tally what you have in your textbook and what we are doing right now uh, from our question papers. It must tally, it must give us the same thing or the same concept. This is just a revision that must tally from exactly what we have from our notes. All right, so these are the typical questions. We shall see others as we move 